In this video, we provide an introduction to the hybridization of atomic orbitals. All right, uh, using balanced bond theory, we have seen that uh, the way that covalent bonds are formed is by the overlap of singly occupied atomic orbitals from two different atoms. Okay, we've been able to write the balanced bond theory diagrams for hydrogen, uh, hydrofluoric acid, and also nitrogen. Now, it turns out that uh, that description uh, in which atomic orbitals overlap to form bonds actually quickly breaks down when you take a look at compounds made out of carbon, for example. All right, so when we think about uh, the electronic configuration of carbon, okay, we know that this is equal to helium, and then 2s2, 2p2. All right, and if we draw the uh, box uh, diagram for the orbitals, what you will get for the balance is something like this. That is the 2s. And this is the 2p. Right, so with this type of uh, electronic structure, with this type of atomic orbitals, uh, we can start to ask the question of what type of uh, structures would we expect carbon to uh, exhibit? Right. So notice that well, uh, carbon has here two singly occupied orbitals which are perpendicular to each other. Right. So if we draw here the uh, orbital picture. That is the 2s with two electrons, and then you would have the 2px. Uh, with one electron, and then you will have here, here the 2py with another electron. Okay, and the 2pc will be coming in and out of the plane, but in this particular picture is, is actually empty, so we don't worry about it. Then uh, with this uh, orbital picture, what you would expect to find here is that uh, carbon would be able to form two bonds, right? Uh, you will have an overlap right here, and then an overlap right there. And then to those two bonds should be 90 degrees away from each other, more or less. Right? But it turns out that in reality, it's very rare to find carbon using that bonding uh, structure. Instead, you have a huge variety of geometries around uh, carbon that do not agree at all with this orbital picture. For example, let's think about simple molecules like methane. Okay? Methane, CH4, is actually a situation or a molecule in which you don't, you don't have two bonds, instead you have four, right? And uh, what is more interesting is that uh, uh, the bonds are actually not 90, degree, uh, 90 degrees away from each other, but are perfectly tetrahedral, right? So that bond, that uh, bond angle now is 109.5, right? So there's no way that we can actually uh, uh, try to come up with uh, an orbital representation for uh, the carbon in methane that actually agrees what we, what we have from the native, the atomic orbital description of carbon. But this is not the only exception. There's actually many more. For example, if you think about uh, ethylene, which is this molecule, or ethene, okay, notice that in this case, you do not have uh, four bonds. Instead, what you actually have is three bonds. right? And more interesting than that, uh, uh, this is a trigonal planar molecule. right? So this molecule is in a plane. And that angle is 120 degrees. Again, there's simply no way that you can take that uh, structure, that orbital structure, and then form bonds and get to something like this. Because again, you only expect two bonds, right? And they should be 90 degrees away from each other. And here you have something that is entirely different. Three bonds, one of them is a double bond. Uh, and then the angles are about 120 degrees. More uh, possibilities. It's very common for carbon to find uh, to be in this other possibility. This is the molecule of acetylene. Now, this is interesting now, because uh, in this particular molecule, each carbon atom is making only two bonds, which is great, because you have here that, according to this orbital uh, picture, you should form two bonds. But the uh, disagreement is that now these two bonds are actually 180 degrees from each other. Right? We do VSPR theory. Uh, for this low dose structure, we find two groups of electrons. That is a linear arrangement. That angle is 180, not 90. Okay, so clearly there's something that is not working very well. Somehow, carbon does not seem to utilize this atomic orbital description. Instead, it seems to have various possibilities that emerge uh, to give rise to all of these variety of structures. Okay, so uh, in this video, we're going to try to explain very briefly uh, uh, how you go from atomic picture, that is uh, uh, what we expect from the periodic table, to something that is a little different but can accommodate all of this uh, polymorphism. OK, great. So the idea then is that uh, you hybridize the atomic orbitals that you have right here 
to generate new hybrid atomic orbitals. Right? So the idea is that again, you're not going to have this description right here. Instead, there's going to be a change in this orbital picture that is going to give you a variety of possibilities with, with which you can form bonds. Right? And that is what we call hybridization. We're going to try to start here by explaining the uh, bond in methane, the bond in, in methane where you have four connections, right, four bonds, and uh, they're in a tetrahedral environment. Okay, so uh, the idea here would be as possible, uh, as, as following. Here you have energy, and this is the uh, electronic configuration of carbon. in its native state, right? So that, that's what we know so far. Now, notice that here we can only form two bonds, okay? So, well, uh, a possibility would be to actually change the electronic configuration so, so that you don't have that, but instead you promote that electron to that orbital, and now you have four singly occupied orbitals, right? This is what we call the promotion step. Okay, uh, uh, this uh, takes us quite closer to what we have right there for CH4 because now we're able to form four bonds simply by promoting an electron from the 2s orbital to the M empty 2pc orbital. Okay, we recognize that this uh, carries an energetic penalty, right, because this electronic configuration is of higher energy than the one where you have uh, the electron in the uh, 2s orbital. However, uh, we're opening up here the possibility for forming uh, not two bonds, but four bonds. And we know that forming a bond uh, is very stable. It releases a lot of energy, right? So this investment in energy that we're uh, putting in here to promote the electron is going to be more than compensated once you're able to form four bonds, right? So this is not, not a, a, you know, so, so much of an energetic uh, penalty. Now, uh, we're only halfway done because if we were to draw here the uh, uh, bonding, using this uh, orbital picture, uh, we would have four bonds, but then the problem is that we will have three bonds of a kind, right, formed by uh, these two p orbitals, and then a different bond that is formed by the two s orbital. However, in methane, all four bonds are exactly the same. Right? The question is, how do we reconcile that? Well, the idea is that uh, once you have this picture, when uh, there are single occupied orbitals, you're actually going to mix these three 2p orbitals with the 2s orbital to form new hybrid orbitals, which are uh, a combination of uh, these four orbitals. Okay. In reality, uh, uh, what happens here is quite complicated, and we're not going to see it, but you should not forget that these are actually mathematical wave functions okay, uh, uh, that we can actually manipulate algebraically. And uh, the mixing that we're going to do right here it's actually simply a linear combination of these two S wave function with those three 2P wave functions. Okay, that's what we call hybridization. But again, we're not going to go to the uh, quantum mechanical description of how this comes about. Okay, there's an important idea here though, and that is that when you mix four atomic orbitals, you are going to get four hybrid atomic orbitals, right? So you go from four orbitals to four orbitals. These orbitals are now hy hybrid, Okay, and again, are a combination of the s orbital with the two p orbitals, and those are all singly occupied. We call these the sp3 orbitals. Okay, so these sp3 orbitals again are linear combinations of these, which will have a 25% contribution from the s orbital, and then 75 contribution from the p orbitals. Okay, but importantly, once you make this, this uh, once you make the, these orbitals, they're all exactly identical. And again, from the mathematics, which we're not going to be uh, uh, dealing with in this video, you can actually see that these orbitals, these sp3 hybrid orbitals, actually are aligned along uh, uh, the tetrahedral directions. Okay, so the orbital picture is not what we had right there, but if you have this promotion and then a hybridization, that is the hybridization step, then the orbital picture for carbon would be something like this. Here is, uh, let me actually draw that a little better. That would be an sp3 orbital with one electron. Then you would have another sp3 orbital right here with another electron. You would have an sp3 orbital coming uh, from uh, out of the plane a little bit with one electron. And then another one 
will be going uh, behind the plane, okay, right there, with another electron. Okay, that is the orbital picture that emerges after you take the natural orbitals of carbon and hybridize them according to the sp3 scheme to generate uh, that uh, system of orbitals, hybrid orbitals. Now, we can then explain uh, the bonding in methane using valence bond theory by simply saying that each one of these hybrid orbitals is going to overlap with a 1s wave function of the hydrogen atom. So then you're going to have four single CH bonds that are exactly identical and then the directions of these bonds are around the tetrahedral direction. Okay, so uh, in this video we have uh, explained how the natural atomic orbitals of carbon uh, are dissatisfying to explain uh, various bonding structures. Then uh, to explain the bonding in methane, we have uh, appealed to the concept of promotion and hybridization, which provides uh, hybrid orbitals that are now uh, able to explain the geometry and the type of bonding that you have in methane. This is what we call an sp3 hybridization. In the next videos, we're going to see other types of hybridizations that are possible, such as sp2 and sp, and then we will be able to explain uh, uh, essentially all of the uh, simple covalent molecules that we have in nature.